first thing that you're going to want to do before we dive right in and start recording any MIDI is to make sure that your MIDI configuration has been set up. This is something that you're going to do in the audio MIDI setup. So if you go up under setup to MIDI, MIDI studio, this automatically will load your audio MIDI setup. This can also be found, this application, this, this is part of your Apple operating system and it's actually in your utilities folder. If we were to go to, say, the Finder and hit Apple N, bring up a new window, I will search under Applications, Utilities, and there you will see your Audio MIDI setup. AMS is what they call it for short. This is where we configure our audio drivers and our MIDI devices. So any active MIDI device that we have connected to our system, you're going to see in here, you'll see there's a Novation Remote, a Key Station 49. You'll notice that these are grayed out. That's because I don't have those particular devices connected to my system at this time. I do have a Firewire 410, my Mbox, and a uh, Axiom USB 25. So this is our MIDI controller. This represents our Axiom sitting right here. Now this is a virtual representation of what's physically going on in our studio. So if we were to follow and trace this physical cable that I have, it's going from the output of my Axiom 25 to the input of my Yamaha RY30. And that's what these connections are right here. These are ports. So this physical port is being drawn out and connected to the input of my RY30. If I wanted to, I could run the output of my RY30 to the input of the Axiom, but right now I don't have that connection made, so it doesn't make much sense to do it. But because we have that configuration set up, Pro Tools will be able to look at this and know what we have connected to our system. So when we go to work with our MIDI tracks, what you're going to see is uh, that RY30, which is as a destination. So you'll notice on my I.O. section, the input and the output. The input is set to all, or I could go in and tell it the Axiom 25, any of these ports and any of these channels on those ports, but I'm just going to keep it on all. Uh, if I had multiple MIDI controllers, I can actually go through and assign specific controllers to specific instruments, things like that. But since we're just using the one, we're just going to keep it as all and keep it really simple. Where it's going to navigate to is the RY30 on channel number one. So if I hit play, oh, not able to hear anything because I don't have it record armed. That's another gotcha. Make sure that you have your track record ready. That's what this little R button is. That allows Pro Tools to know that this is where I'm directing that MIDI information. It is possible to have two tracks record armed at once. Hold down the shift key and select the other record ready or record arm. So now that data is going to go two places. So here we can hear that drum. Let me just navigate. I'm going to play those two and then we'll find maybe a hi-hat sound to layer on top of it. But let's go ahead and do a four bar loop of just that. I'm going to go ahead and drop into record. Now, I'm going to bring up my transport real quick. There's a couple options that we can use for recording. Right now, we don't have any pre-roll set up for recording. So in order for me to use a count off, let's say I want to do a one bar count. I'm going to set up my count off to be one bar. So when I engage this, that means when I hit record, it won't start recording it gives me a one bar lead in before we do it. Actually, two bars is pretty good. That's one way to record. Another easy way of doing this is to use the wait for the MIDI note symbol, which is right down here. And what I'm going to do is hit record. So you can see right down here, my transport's flashing. My record and my play are both flashing. What it's doing is it's waiting for the first note that I'm going to play. 